Hi all, uh, we're gonna do some graphing today and we are doing one of my favorite sections, which is graphing a line from an equation. And what we have here is an equation in slope intercept form. So here's the slope, here's the intercept. Oftentimes the slope is referred to as M and the intercept is referred to as B. And you have y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the intercept. Okay, so here's two. This is where we're starting, right? That intercept is two, and the slope is one, which means every time we move to the right one, we have to move up one. So right one, up one, right one, up one. That's what a slope of one means. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our y-intercept at two. And then put another point up to the right one, up one. That's so cool that it makes that line. Okay, and click answer. There we go, that simple. Okay, so our y-intercept is three. So we're going to put a point at zero comma three. And then our slope is one half. So what does that mean? Well, one way of thinking about that is every time we move one to the right, we move one half down. So you could say rise over run. is one over two. So you have to run two to rise one. Okay, you have to run two to rise one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll put our other dot like so, and we will have the equation of this line. Okay. So how about this? Y equals 3x plus 1. So we will have a y-intercept of 1, and we have a slope of 3. So when we move to the right, 1. So again, we could think of that as 3 over 1 is our m. So we have to move over 1 to rise 3. We have to run 1 to rise 3. So 1, 3. Get that line. And the bigger the number here is, the steeper the line is. Because we get more rise for our run. Well, this is interesting. So we know that the y-intercept is 10. Let's see what negative three means. So rise over run. Now you can choose where to put the negative. I think it's it's up to you, but I like to put it on the top, which means that I have to run one to rise negative three, or I have to move one to the right to fall three. So I go here and I go one, two, three. And that gives me a negative slope. Okay, this is the Similar one. So our y-intercept of 10, the rise is negative three, the run is one. So we move over one to fall three. Okay, how about this guy? So we, we go to zero, seven. And just so you understand, I'm going to rise, I'm gonna put the rise on the top, the negative on the top again. So I'm gonna have negative one. I'm gonna have run. I'm gonna make the run two. So we, we move to the right two to fall one. One, two, down one. Oops, 
There we go. Oh, I don't know if I recognize that lady. She's never congratulated me before. All right. We have negative three over one. So the run is one, the rise is negative three. We start at 10. One, one, two, three. And there we go. All right, how about this? Start at two. We have to run two to rise one. Let's do this one a different way. Let's plug in x equals zero, right? Which we know the y-intercept is four. And then let's go ahead and plug in x equals two. So when we plug in x equals two, what do we get? Y equals two plus four, so y equals six. So when x is two, y is six. So that's a, we can you know we could just take another random point, plug it in, and connect those two points and get a line. So that's another way you can graph lines. All you need is two points, and you can get a line. It's kind of fun. Um, let's do this one that way too, because we, we've done a lot with the rise over run. Uh, okay, I'll do the rise over run as well. So let's say we have two here, and our run is two, and our rise is one. But another thing we could have done is we could have plugged in, say, four in for x. If we plugged in four for x, then we get y equals one half times four is two. So we get two plus two, which would equal four. So that means four, four should be a point on this graph. So we could have also just pick that as another point and used that and say zero, two, we get the same line. It's kind of cool. Like no matter what point you pick on here, it'll satisfy this equation. Lines are so important um, because actually in life, a lot of the curves that you see that are more complicated can be approximated by lines. And when you learn calculus, it's, it's kind of about breaking curves down into simpler lines. So you really need to understand the fundamental concept about a line. Uh, so here we have a y-intercept of four, and a slope of one, so we, ri we run one to rise one, and voila. Okay, guys, practice your lines, they're super important. Understand them graphically, algebraically, plug in points. Try to understand them from a lot of different angles because it'll end up helping you.